Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. This is Rishabh from Ascending Techie and today we are going to talk about the colorful iGame RTX 3080 Ultra OC 10G. So this is the same card that I used in my build recently. Uh, the video is live on the YouTube channel now. So check it out if you want to. So the company Colorful is said to be well known in Asia but not so much in US and Canada. But even in India, I, I have never come across the company Colorful, especially for GPU. So I found out about Colorful when I was looking for the 3080 Founders Edition. And in this video, we will be taking a look at the benchmarks and the clock speeds that the GPU runs at with the temperature and everything else. So this video is not sponsored by Colorful or anything. I'm making this because there is a lack of data regarding this GPU in the market so i hope this would give you an insight whether you want to buy this graphics card or not if you are planning to buy a 3080 and you want to compare it to other gpus okay uh, let's talk about the physical gpu first so uh, as you can see obviously the gpu has three fans and we have a display over here which is the logo of igame itself which is rgb then we have three display ports and an HDMI port and we have a OC button that you can click and then reboot your system to turn on and switch to a higher base uh, boost clock. Okay, uh, something else that I want to specify is that this card has three 8-pin power connectors and the weird thing about it is that uh, you can see it in my PC build video that when you plug the power cords in and if your power cords are going down then it will be covering this screen so there's like it could have been a little bit on this side where it's not getting covered by the power cords so i had to route the cables from above the gpu towards the back side so that's something that they could have done better uh, so far i'm impressed with the cooler itself it's uh, huge and it cools the graphics card very well. Uh, the temperatures are staying very well below 70 unless and until I'm trying to run benchmark like heaven or something where it would reach 70 or 72 at max for now. Okay, so now we move to the specs. Uh, we have a base clock of 1440 megahertz and a boost clock of 1710 on stock and 1755 with the OC button turned on. And as you can see, we have a 340 watt TDP. Uh, I'm using this graphics card with a 750 watt power supply and I haven't had a single issue yet. So nothing like uh, the system turning off because there was a spike in usage of power or something like that. Something else that you need to keep in mind is that the card is actually really large. You should do your research well before putting it in a case that is relatively small. Another tip that uh, I would like to give from my own experience with my build is that the cooler, CPU cooler that I'm using is very big and so is the GPU and the PCI clip, the butterfly cl clip or it, that's what it's called, right? Uh, that clip is very hard to access if I want to remove the GPU. So uh, before building, I want to let you know that this is something that you have to keep in mind that how you would uh, remove the GPU because there's barely any space for me to put my hand in to uh, open the clip. So I have to put in a rod or something like that and it feels very risky to put a rod to just open the clip because you could uh, ram the rod into the motherboard. Uh, so speaking of benchmarks and stuff, uh, usually the GPU boosts very much higher than the advertised boost clocks even of the OC on stock. So let's get into some benchmarks. We'll first go with the Blender benchmarks and the render time that we have is written here so i will quickly move through them so you can take a look at what the render times are okay so now that you have seen this uh, i will put up on the screen the median render time that uh, blender has put up on their website to compare that 
the uh, what the speed of the 3080 is in the times that we are getting compared to what they say that we should be getting on a 3080. So overall it's pretty good we are getting fast render times. Now Geekbench 5 scores uh, we have uh, a score of 1,84,564 for OpenCL benchmark and on an average uh, all the OpenCL scores are in the line of 18,000 or 19,000 for some high-end cards. So it's on par with uh, all the 3080s that are available in the market. Then we have a CUDA score which is much higher than the OpenCL score. Okay, so this is all nice and good, but the real benchmarks that I wanted to talk about is TimeSpy 3D Mark benchmark because we have a very detailed analysis of what the clock frequencies were along with the temperature of CPU and GPU. Mostly we care about the GPU temperature. This is a very, very basic test run that I did. No clicking of the OC button yet and we have the stock fan curve and uh, no apps open in the background so we have a graphics score of 17418 which in my opinion is uh, on par with the stock settings of any 3080 that is available in the market for example the founders edition this is another run that i did on stock settings with the fans set to 100 percent all three fans set to 100 percent using their own iGame center software and uh, that's why i've written full fans so the frequency was usually in the lines of 1800 and it would boost up to 1905 frequently but uh, not so much okay so we have a good card that is boosting to 1800 and something on stock settings and sometimes to 1905 with the fans on full what happens when we press the OC button we have a slight increase in the graphics score which is 17629 and but what's more interesting is that the core clock is now easily boosting much higher than what we were previously so in this run it almost never reached 1900 or 1905 but it was running much stable and as you can also see that the temps were in the lines of 67 68 at max right so this was on oc still stock fan curve then we have overclock on the stock overclock with the button pressed on full fans so now as you can see as we start benchmarking we boost up to 1905 and we boost to 1920 and it's usually staying in there so we are boosting to 1905 1920 and staying there and then it gets stable 18 anywhere in the range of 1800 so these are all the stock non-OC and OC benchmarks but there's still room for overclocking left so I'm not a pro with overclocking graphics cards yet so I used iGame Center and overclocked it using the settings and then I started putting numbers over here also I have changed the curve that I use on daily basis this point is same as what the stock curve is so it will be very silent when it's almost idle or idle and then at 60 uh, degrees celsius the fans would be at 60 percent and on 70 degrees we would be ramping up to 100 so i don't mind the graphics card making noise but i'd rather have the clocks running higher than uh, the clocks turning down because the temperature is too high and to be honest the cooler does a very good job of keeping the clocks up high and keeping the temperature low so i with this curve this curve i hope you can uh, note it down again if you want to do this with your card the card easily stays below 70 degrees celsius by this time i have streamed seven times and while streaming valorant or fortnite i haven't exceeded 70 degrees celsius it's usually staying uh, with valorant it's usually staying at 55 60 and with fortnite it's about 65 or 68 degrees celsius so i started putting in numbers here 
so that's what we are going to check now so as you can see in this video we have a hundred plus hundred four o'clock uh, the OC button is turned on now for uh, all of the benchmarks that I'll show and then I have put up a plus hundred uh, ignore the number that you see over here I just put one five four zero so that would be plus hundred and save it right this is with the co on plus hundred power limit uh, ramp to the max that is one zero six from what I've seen on my card we have plus six percent of uh, room as per I game center so as you can see our scores are already above eighteen thousand and something more interesting that you need to see is that the base clock is again the advertised 1755 megahertz base clock but we are now boosting up much higher than we were before so 1995 the max boosting that we saw before was 1905 or 1905 but now we are boosting to 1995 so for the most part it has stayed above 19,000 1980, 1995, 1950 so this card is capable of boosting much higher and as you can see uh, now check the temperature curve for the GPU uh, this is 68 at this point and that's the max that we have gone this is with a custom fan curve that the fan curve that I just showed you that's the fan curve that I'm using for this benchmark so with the fan curve uh, the GPU is silent at idle or near idle or 30 or 40 percent load and it might get a little bit loud when it's uh, running faster at 80 90 or 100 percent but you can ignore that because you will be probably playing games or something and you will have headphones on. Uh, at this point, I haven't overclocked the memory. And this was the final benchmark that I ran. Uh, it was the best benchmark. I haven't gone beyond because I don't want to roast my card yet. I don't think it would roast my card. So I hope you don't judge me for that. I'm still learning, okay? So the max I did was plus 150 on the co and plus 150 on the mem and i rammed the fans to 100 percent all three fans okay and the power limit was set on max as well and this was the highest score that i have achieved i haven't tried going further than 150 150 i know i can but i'm not doing that right now okay so to the frequencies as you can see we are already boosting beyond 2000 at this point 2055 uh, something else that you need to know is that the GPU temperature is much lower that's why we are boosting so high so the temperature is at 50 uh, something and we are boosting high now when the temperature uh, increase you saw that it reached 2055 at max and uh, fell down to 1980 it's gone back up a little bit okay so the max stamps with the ram uh, fans rammed to full we have a temperature that is a spike of 63 let's say 63 degrees celsius so this is what we have the card is capable of boosting upwards of 2000 megahertz easily if you know how to overclock i don't and therefore i'm not risking it yet but these are the frequencies the card can run at when it's cold so something else that i also found for you guys is that there are uh, water blocks available for this card that you can put it on so if you put this water block on the GPU, it would be much cooler and it would be boosting much higher. So this is the behavior that uh, I have noticed. There is one thing, one minus point that I need to mention apart from the cables that cover the RGB is that the unit that I have received has a little bit of fan rattle whenever the GPU fans turn on. So 
this does has a zero rpm mode uh, like all the other 3000 series graphics cards so if it's idle and it is old it would turn off the fans the issue that i have is that the fans rattle when they turn on so whenever each unit turns on there is a slight fan rattle every time it turns on and i wasn't able to uh, isolate what the noise was coming from my case uh, fans or something like that i eventually concluded that it was the graphics card making that noise i'll put up a clip as well And I have also applied for RMA and the other GPU is on the way. So I'll get a replacement because this is something that I'm not able to solve myself. Uh, there's no cable touching the fans, but I thought that I should mention this. It's not usual for this to happen. So I guess I got unlucky on that part, but the fans rattle whenever they turn on and then, then it doesn't rattle at any point in time. So even if it is at 100%, it's not rattling. It's just uh, the fans spinning fast that make noise. Okay, so I hope you learned something about this graphics card from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, be kind to everyone.